Good morning, everyone. There's a reason I have the mic here. There's a speaker up there by the camera, and you will be hearing the audio feed in from that cam or feed into the camera from that speaker I got right beside the uh, <clears throat> right beside the um, camera position. I got a speaker set up as sort of a PA system. As many of you know, last week I was suffering, having had major sinus problems after a fan was blowing into my face all night to give my wife air to circulate through. And... This has been going on a couple of weeks. Week before last, uh, I would have given a Wednesday night Bible study, but instead had weather to keep up with. So, this week, I'm getting better. I am taking antibiotic for the sinus infection. I've got plenty of drink on me up here at the pulpit. I'll call it a full pit, or what have you. Well, let me go get this door right quick, and while I'm at it, give something else. Just keep praying, y'all. Keep praying that I continue the process of healing. And that my sinus has become clear and I can speak clear to you and to everyone this. We've got a long way to travel in the book of John. It was now before the feast of the Passover when Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. I just want to let you know, next week, as we cover up to here, we're going to have a Friday special, a good Friday service to commemorate the death of Jesus Christ. But on Sunday, Easter Sunday, well, it's Easter on the calendar, but it's going to be called Resurrection Sunday in our calendar. And I just praise God for that in the name of Jesus. That He brought His Son to save our souls. He brought His Son to save our souls. And that is what we will celebrate on Sunday, next Sunday, one week from today. We will celebrate Resurrection Sunday. 
Now this week down at Doe, uh, there are some notable events happening. Number one, Jimmy Swaggart Ministries is holding a camp meeting down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana at the campus of Family Worship Center. I wish I was there. And I wish my wife and I could go and meet the man. Not just meet the man, but have a filling of the Holy Ghost within us. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to Jehovah, his Father. And hallelujah to the Holy Spirit that fills us and comforts us. We're going to start John chapter 13. We're going to go until they capture him. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. After supper, be and supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things unto his hand, into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. Now remember earlier, Jesus told his he told the Pharisees and Sadducees, I and my Father are one. So in verse 4, he rises from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. And Jesus saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? <clears throat> you call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that when it come to pass, ye may believe it, I am he. Verily, Verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in the spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. 
Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot. The son of Simon. And after the song, Satan entered into him. And Jesus said unto him, Thou that thou doest, do quickly. No man at the table, in verse 28, now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. Some of them thought because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things, that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. <clears throat> Therefore, when he was gone out, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, Whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, A new commandment I give unto you, That ye love one another, as I have loved you, And that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, If ye have loved one to another. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither thou goest? Whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, and wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. For that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. <clears throat> Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, Show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not, I am in the Father, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. These words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son.
If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Verse 16. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And that day ye shall know that I am... Let me repeat verse 20. And that at that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Glory to Jehovah God in the highest realm. And glory to Jesus Christ. Thank you Jesus for being the intercessor. There was a Judas, not Iscariot, who saith unto him, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I. And now I've told you, before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. We're getting into familiar territory because when I first started this ministry, the video portion of this ministry of JBM, I taught extensively on the true vine. But here we go again, that Jesus Christ might be made manifest to you through the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, as they went. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. This is Jesus talking. If you look in certain Bibles, it's got Jesus' words in red.
Jesus continues in verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. See, Jesus had to abide in the love of his Father, Jehovah. Once again, verse 10, If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But that I have called you friends, for all things I have heard of my Father, have I, I have made known unto you. John 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Let me pause right here a moment and give you a better understanding of it. We have believers, pastors, Deacons, whoever, they enter these churches. They stay with the church a while, but they've brought the sin in with them into the sanctuary. They're including politics in the sanctuary, the most sacred place in the ministry of Jehovah God Almighty and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Pastors, don't bring the ballot box with you. Deacons, keep the politics out of the sacred place of the sanctuary. Believers, ye may live in this world right now, but you are not of this world. The day you got saved, the day you got saved, you forsaken the world. You don't pull the ballot box with you. Heave it out of you. In the name of Jesus. We voted for Jehovah as God and ruler over this universe. His Son, Jesus Christ, as the King of kings and Lord of lords and the Holy Spirit to give us that knowledge. Glory to the Lamb of 
God. Amen. Glory to Jehovah. And glory to the Holy Spirit that keeps us. Verse 17. These things I command you. That ye love one another. If the world hate you. Ye know that it hated me. Before it hated you. If ye were of the world. The world would love his own. Anybody that brings politics into the church. Tell them to take it outside. Anybody that tells you to vote one way or another, tell them you're wrong. You vote your conscience. You vote as you should vote for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords every Sunday, every Wednesday, every day in between. Man should never be put on a pillar. And yet we have people that do it every day. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. Why? Because when we confess to the sin and it's lit up, we get away from it. We get away from that sinful nature. Yes, we can talk to friends. Yes, we can do a lot of things. But we cannot wallow in sin like pigs in the mud. And talking politics in the sanctuary of God. You people know who you are. I could name one by name. But then I would be having to repent. But I saw this situation. Saw it with my own eyes. Heard it with my own ears. That a prominent deacon at that church that I helped sow the ministry seed of a media ministry into that church. Got them their YouTube channel going. The sermons are up that I was there to record. I was there. The guy was telling the believers down there to vote Republican. This coming from a man of God? I don't know who's more delusional, the Republican Party for believing they can hold all the power of the world and of the nation, or the people that vote and enable these Republicans. I have no idea. I'll let the Lord lead me on that one. Because I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a theologian student. I was called to preach the ministry. My vocation was journalism for a long time. I worked for a local TV station in Anniston, Alabama. And if I can stand here and give the word of God and be called to preach the word of God with the voice that I have, however haggard it is because of sinus problems, and if I can preach this word, if 
from Genesis to Revelation. If I can preach this word, ladies and gentlemen, you can study it. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they've both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which hath, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have seen, you have been with me. If you would like to learn more about our ministry, the Vineyard Broadcast, or the other ministry programs of James Barkus Ministries, visit us at jamesbarkusministries.wordpress.com. Visit us today. We're also back on Facebook. We're back. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God who is who was and whoever shall be. I hope you enjoyed that little break where we told you how you could help the ministry. As you know, we're on YouTube. Our link is available on our website, jamesbarkusministries.wordpress.com. It's a free website. We set up on the WordPress server. You click on that channel link for YouTube and you can see our services, including this one that is up on the screen. I'm also going to make an introduction video, ladies and gentlemen, that will tell you at all times how you can help the ministry. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. And now we're going to put that slide up on the screen. You can help us. PayPal.me forward slash JBM Vineyard. That's PayPal.me forward slash JBM Vineyard. You can write to us or send your check, money order, or what have you to James Barkus Ministries, 302 West 3rd Street, Manchester, Georgia, 31816-1636. We check our mail every day. Sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the evening, depending on when the mailman runs, and my job starts on Monday, praise Jehovah and His Son, Jesus Christ. If you have a revival, special event, or you just want us to be a guest speaker on Sunday morning service. Uh, first thing we ask is permission to bring our video equipment and what have you along so that we can get the word we preach out. Um, but do get in touch with us, JBM World HQ at live. Dot com. You can also write to JBM World Headquarters, all spelled out, at gmail.com. So, got several ways to for you to get in touch with us, but the easiest way, JBM World HQ at live.com. That's up on the screen. You can also call me, 706-977-6477, although I do want to let you know that because of my job, I will have it set to do not disturb, leave a voicemail message. I'll be glad to get back to you.
but please consider giving and tithing to JBM because I'm sure this word that is without the controversy, without the political things, but straight from the Word of God in this Bible from Genesis to Revelation, that's what's given. And that's what we can give you. We ended John chapter 15 before the break. And we now begin John chapter 16 right now. Yet Jesus took them to the garden of Gethsemane. As they were walking to the Mount of Olives, he continued. John 16 verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. We already have that. People getting killed in synagogues and churches and other places of worship because a voice in their head has them convinced they are doing a service to Jehovah and His Son Jesus Christ or whatever God they believe. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things say, I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me and none of you asketh me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. And reprove means convict. And of righteousness. And of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world was judged or is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. And that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. He's talking of his ascension to heaven, to be at the right hand of Jehovah, our Father in heaven. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father... I said, therefore, what is this that he saith a little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew they were desirous to ask him and said unto him, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while and ye shall not see me, and again a little while ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, there shall weep, they shall, that ye shall weep, weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. 
and ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Let me explain something. Ask and ye shall receive. We go back to Matthew 7, where he says, Ask and ye shall receive, seek and ye shall find, knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. For he that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. And he that knocketh, the door shall be opened. And I come into him, and he comes into me. That's a paraphrase at the end of it. But Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, and that your joy may be full. Verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you, I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me. And have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father. And I'm coming to the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him. Lo, now speakest thou plainly. And speakest no proverb. Now we are sure that thou knowest all things. And needest not say that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh ye is now come, that ye shall be scattered, and every man to his own shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now we get to the prayer that Jesus lifted his eyes up to his Father in heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory of which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name thou, those whom thou hast given me, 
and that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them was lost, but the son of perdition. The scripture might be fulfilled, and now I come, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may though may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee but I have known thee and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name. And will declare it. That the love wherewith thou hast loved me. May be in them. And I. In them. Jesus Christ thought of us as he was preparing to leave this world as Jesus Christ was preparing to be scourged and flogged and all the other evils wrought Supposedly in the name of Jehovah. My friends. On Friday. When we do Good Friday service. In the evening time. It will be about 8 o'clock Eastern time. And I'm going to do it live. From my desk. In a live stream to YouTube, I'll put the link up on jamesbarkusministries.wordpress.com. We also have our JBM um, Facebook back as an advertisement to our website. But we have James Barkus Ministries back up on Facebook as well. What I'm going to do at this time, is from last week's service. I'm going to do the sinner's prayer because my voice is a little weak. So you will see me in what I wore last week. It is on tape. But we're going to do the sinner's prayer at that time. 
because we are putting this together on tape, you will see it as I gave it last week. I want to tell you in Jesus' name that I desire that the word of Jehovah that we are about to see in this last week before Resurrection Sunday is given. And that our joy will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. I'll put the sinner's prayer right after this message, but if you want to help the ministry, I will put the slide up from our slideshow and give it to you that way. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. I know I have been under the weather. I know I have done a lot of things in preparation for the job that I'm about to partake to bring money into the house. But the one thing I am going to bring as well is money into the house of God. And for that, there will be an upgrade I will make. There will be a separate debit card for JBM through PayPal. And I will deposit my tithe into the church to help. Even with paying the bills. Because I have to keep internet service for work. Even with the bills. I actually pour everything. To keeping the roof over the head, the lights on. Batteries for the equipment I use. I do all that. So I pray that you'll help us at JVM. My wife, we wore out yesterday due to the doctor's appointment she had. But I also know that in every day, in every way, Jesus Christ is the Son of God and is also the Son of Man. And I pray each day you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior.